I like I can't I can't believe we made it to, to 2021. And we're walking into 2021 and MF Doom passed away. And in typical MF Doom fashion, you find out about it two months later. Like, yo, um, guys, what's going on? Happy New Year. We made it 2021. 2020 was definitely a very unique and different type of year. All the things that you're used to being a certain particular way have pretty much been crumbled up and thrown out the window. And it was like no holds barred. Nothing was safe. Nothing was normal. And it was a, an exciting and terrifying and unique year. Today's video is basically gonna be a recap of all things 2020 through the eyes of 2Js and Urban Necessities and talking about some of the things that happened in pop culture, sports, and with Shop 2Js and Urban Necessities. So sit back, hang out with me as I, I walk you through what 2020 looked and felt like. So the year starts for Urban Necessities with me going to UNC to hang out with the Dean of the University of North Carolina. I catch a basketball game with Joni. I speak at a couple entrepreneurship classes at UNC, something that I get the opportunity to do every, every semester when the world is open. I've actually had to do a couple of those throughout the year through Zoom meetings, not only at UNC, but Duke. But I get the, I get the opportunity to meet the Dean, Joni and I, great guy. It's an awesome environment. It's really tough to put into words. I'm a, a massive UNC fan, and it, it's just that that Dean Dome is, is something else. In March, we have COVID it shuts pretty much the entire United States down. For the most part, the entire world. Our pop-up comes up to an end with American Eagle out in Soho. And then I have four months of not being able to sell online or in-store because the way our backend system is set up, the not knowing is this going to be a one day thing, a two week thing, a one month thing, a four month thing that it turned into being started. It was the birth of Shop 2J's Closet and through Shop 2J's Closet, what started with, you know what? I have these clothes that are still in great shape and sneakers that I don't use every day and just product that I had hoarded. It started with that to then doing merch and then creating giveaways and it just snowballed into something completely different and something that we quickly realized even though we have urban necessities we still got to keep this shop 2j's closet thing going because there's just too much support too much love and and the giveaways are definitely needed we meet moondust throughout this whole process and moondust just adds another layer to shop 2j's closet with these special boxes and we met him through Quarantine TV, which is something that we're now at over 120 episodes where I have pretty much since March, jump on Instagram, take two to three hours. And it started with, you know, adding friends and people that I look up to, peers that I have met throughout the years and asking them about their sneaker collections and just People that we're all in general fans of, from Bun B to Victor Cruz to owners of other shops to hardcore sneaker collectors and getting to ask them the questions that you, the fan or the supporter, would love to ask but don't have the opportunity to ask. And it goes from that to now, you know, I have hundreds if not thousands of people tuning in, checking in from all over the world and they just want to show off pairs or they want to ask questions and teaching guys how to resell. And we've watched people like uh, Matt Johnson, Johnson Sneaker Co on Instagram, go from having a room with no sneakers to having a room with a bunch of empty crates to all the crates are full to now hundreds of pairs a week at Urban Necessities, thousands of pairs throughout this process. And it happened fast. And, and those videos are still on Instagram and you can watch them and kind of see what that turned into but some of the giveaways were crazy i mean it started it started with you know the skull and bones shirts and we gave away strange loves and then for a while we joked that the strange loves were no longer strange loves they were just two j's and like the market spiked um we did tie-dye shirts and chunkies and that was that was crazy the amount of support we received on that it was something we were just trying to push boundaries and just make it fun and it, it really 
it became so much more shop 2j's and quarantine tv on 2j's instagram just became it became an outlet for so many of us to kind of cope with everything that was crazy and like we didn't understand and this was like the only bit of normalcy i had was being able to interact with you guys and uh it kept me sane and i know i mean just from seeing the dms the phone calls the texts uh i know it helped a lot of people and and uh something that you know i didn't know we were capable of and something that i know will always be at the core of me and my brand you know quarantine tv is an extension of sneaker con for me this is stuff i did at sneaker con all day long this is stuff that i got to do inside stores uh when i'm at my store I'm talking to the supporters in person but when you're stripped of that instagram is all we got and uh it was a lot of fun so there was a lot of highlights definitely a lot of monumental moments a lot of shocking moments throughout 2020 and, and some of the good and some of the bad that you saw um in this year was good was kansas city chiefs won a super bowl like as the San Francisco much cemented himself into a sure thing, Hall of Famer, Tiger King. Yo, like that took over the internet for an entire like 90 days. It was all things Tiger King. There's memes of it all over. I watched two episodes of it and I realized really fast, I, I can't get that time back. Dude, the Michael Jordan documentary was so well put together. I was, I, I like a lot of us, kind of cheated in the sense of watched the whole documentary before the whole documentary was like aired correctly. So the Michael Jordan documentary, how many of you guys watched it like streamed before it actually hit ESPN? Show of hands, maybe type it in in the comment section. I The one thing that I appreciated about that entire documentary, even though some people were like, yo, Michael Jordan was intense is that you were able to get an opportunity to understand what it takes to be great at something. He was exceptional at being an athlete, a competitor, but like a lot of us had a lot of faults and he sucked at a lot of other things. And there was a very unique, weird, different vibes with the side of business and, and a shrewd businessman. Um, but it was amazing. It was the talk of, again, another couple of months and inspired through sneakers, it brought back certain silhouettes that were completely cooked, that weren't reselling, that weren't sought after. It spiked the market crazy. I guess another one of the highlights was, was WAP. Yo, you had grandmothers singing it and, and reenacting and, and um, you know, it, 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 it uh, took over the world for a minute. You know, throughout the year, literally from 19, for me, from 2019 to now, um, one of the things, one of the blessings that I was able to catch was like lightning in a bottle a few times. I bought three different cars this year. Um, and one of the craziest years ever, right? Went from Bentley to a Lexus uh, SUV and uh, Benz. And then throughout the year, you had a lot of crazy sad, very difficult things to understand from COVID. Um, you know, when COVID came out, like we still don't even have an understanding of how you can or can't get it. It changed everything, even for my business. I, it shut us down for four months. It seemed like all our heroes pass away this year. All the people that you were like, no, not, not him, not her. Black Panther, Chadwick passed away. Fucking Alex Trebek, dog. Like, Alex Trebek was supposed to live forever. My, Billy loves Alex Trebek, by the way. Like, you can tell she loves the sound of his voice. Um, that show will never be the same again. Sean, Sean Connery. Dude, Sean Connery, bro. Like, Sean Connery. Fucking 007, dog. The guy that doesn't die and goes through all, like, the most one in a billion chance of surviving died. I get it, it's movies still. Your heroes are not supposed to die. They live forever and he will live forever, but in spirit. Kenny fucking Rogers, bro. Kenny Rogers gone. Eddie Van Halen. Dude, that one hit home. 
like it, it's just crazy it's just crazy some of the people that passed away this year Ruth Bader Ginsburg gender equality God what she meant for an entire future for everything Did, like she's she's part of the start of it man this one really threw me off along with the entire world kobe passing away for me i'm not gonna sit here and tell you i was a big kobe fan um i was actually on vacation when kobe passed away and had to i i had to make a decision a decision that i would do again if i had to we stopped selling kobe's when kobe passed away because the day before Kobe passed away, um, everybody was totally fine with the prices of what we had Kobe's listed at. I'm going to be honest with you. They weren't really selling at Urban Necessities. And Kobe passed away, and in a handful of hours, I sold hundreds of pairs. And I had thousands of requests from consigners to spike the market. You know, two, three thousand percent in some cases, and I just wasn't with it. Not every dollar was a good dollar, and that was a great example of one that we were not open to making. We went seven, eight months without reselling Kobe's in the store. And once the market kind of corrected itself, and we saw that it was consistent and it wasn't price gouging, we allowed Kobe's to be sold again. You know, another moment that it just made life not feel real was the whole George Floyd thing. I haven't really spoken much on the George Floyd topic. Didn't feel it was my place. But what happened with George Floyd and, and Breonna Taylor and all these other people that uh, were put in very compromising and unfortunate situations that caused a lot of pain and anguish, not just for their families, but for an entire race. It's, it's very important, fortunate that so many drastic situations have had to happen for us to say, you know what, that's really fucked up, or we're going about this the wrong way. And society is realizing that so many are put in power and they are not trained correctly to handle those moments, and the moments are bigger than them. Um, the George Floyd, the Breonna Taylors have really showed us, I think as a people, that we need to do a better job of educating and training and talking and listening. Not just hearing, but listening. And hopefully in 2021, we don't have to see such traumatizing and extreme things happening to, to people for us to say we gotta be better. If you're at this part of the video and you've made it to 2021, like, man, do me a favor. Take a moment, stand up, pat yourself on the back and say, man, if I just made it through this, I can make it through anything. You know, one of the goals that I had with my brand from the very beginning was figuring out how to give away a car. We pulled that off in November. We gave away a brand new car. It was the first one that came into this state. And then we drove it down to the guy. Uh, you can't make that up. That happened because of you guys, that, that happened because of the support, the belief in the brand. And it was one of the many moments in my brand's history that although there's been so many overwhelming, even traumatizing moments, um, scary moments with the business that show me that no matter what, we'll always be able to find a way to come together and make it work and pull off some like epic shit. And that was dope. And we ended the year with giving away $47,000 worth of Supremes and shopping sprees at Urban Necessities and had a guy win, then jump on a plane and pick up the shoes and come back as you as you saw if you haven't in the previous video that's on my YouTube. Shop 2Js is everything that I've wanted to do from the beginning and just didn't know how. And over a course of nine months, you guys showed me and worked with me and we got the kinks out and we made it happen. And it's something that we have to keep doing from here on out. So we make it into July. July, the store finally opens. This is four months of the store being closed, not knowing what's going on. 
We have a bunch of product that have been sitting in New York. Consigners not updating prices. Market is like four months ago prices. And we just have record number sales. The second we open, we open the store back up. Like we didn't have to let go of anybody. No one was fired. Everyone's back working. We're putting up numbers. We had been trending to lose like our complete backside when we opened the store back up because we lost four months and we didn't lose any money. Um, we were putting money back in the pockets of our consigners, getting people excited. We, we hit our six year anniversary. We give away $120,000 worth of shoes from the store. We UN Dunks collabs with New Era, co collabs with Nautica, uh, that went so well that we get the opportunity to do it all over again in 21. Stan Sox, donating money to build schools in Puerto Rico. Like, it was the year of just finding ways to make it work. And the one thing that I could speak for on behalf of my brand and myself, and I know a lot of people that I look up to and respect is every single one of us that's like in business, the one, the one common gripe, regardless of profession is I don't have enough time. I don't have enough time to try this or execute that, or I don't know what this would look like. And when the entire world stopped, it gave me the time to try all this stuff that, you know, we're like, it'd be cool to give this a try. I wish I had time to do this. It allowed us to start the conversations with Simon Properties and Forum Shop, Caesars Palace, to relocate the store and, and come back even bigger, even stronger, and change what retail should be. The new store that we're walking into for 2021 that all was executed through 20, uh, the new store is four times the size. The new store is going to have esports. The new store is going to have tattoo artists, barbers, trading cards, ice cream, milkshakes, more sneakers, more clothes, more collaborations. I wouldn't have had the time to make any of this happen if the world wouldn't have shut down. So for as terrifying as what 20 was, it was just as exciting to navigate through all these roadblocks that have happened throughout the entire year. And it was one after another, these lumps that you're like, oh man, is this the one that like cripples it? Is this the one, are we ever going to be the same? Uh, are people going to come back? And and they're still coming and they're still buying shoes and they're now buying clothes and PlayStation 5s, which we sold, you know, over 300 of them in two weeks. So the craziest, the craziest sneaker pickup that we probably had this year um, for Urban Necessities was when we went to Mayor's house and I spent six days in a basement processing 2,400 pairs that we then put on a, a really big u-haul truck and drove back to vegas and documenting and hearing mayor's stories it was my most viewed video of all time on youtube it was really cool to get the opportunity to interact with him hear him tell some stories about his 30 plus years in sneakers and just to see those moments behind closed doors kind of that not everybody gets to see and get a better understanding of the person and why sneakers mattered to, to him so much was probably one of the cooler moments that I had with the brand last year. And obviously by the amount of views that that video had on YouTube, you guys really enjoyed the content and hopefully 21 will allow us to continue to do stuff like that. Ern and I actually went, we a couple months later, went back to New York to pick up a collection with uh, Bandelay um, sneaker collection. And we personally drove uh, those back to Vegas and earned, you killed a, what was it, a pterodactyl, a condor? A condor. A bald eagle with your 3M pants in the middle of the night driving back in a, in a Budge Tega, uh, which is a budget version of the Bentega. And my craziest sneaker pickup of the year was the Paris dump. So all wild moments throughout 20, 2020. So, you know, with all that being said, 
we could go to the we could go to the sneaker room. So I figured, what better way to end this year in review video with giving you what I think are the five best shoes that released in the year of 2020. Now I get it, I get it before you even start going, but I do want to hear what you think your top five are in the comments section below. But please don't take offense to what I think are, this is my favorite five. Are they the top five? I'd like to think they are, but I already know that there's some people that are just not gonna accept what I'm saying, but I do think that um, you're gonna appreciate the variety. I didn't wanna keep it to just one silhouette, one brand, or one colorway, or one theme, right? So in no particular order, here are 2J's top five sneakers of the year 2020. First one, Strangelove, AKA 2J's. Truly amazing shoe. The quality of this is just second to none. And they're dust magnets. And I think my pair has soul separation. Uh, I'm joking. It doesn't, but it does look like a, a little bit. No particular order. Chunkies were a true problem. Man, this, they knocked this one out of the park. From the themes of the shoe, the colorways of the shoe, it just, the presentation, the friends and family packaging, everything about this shoe is truly amazing. A lot of fun and it's believable. It didn't look forced. And that's why I think that this was such a great release. Market dipped a little bit. Take advantage. They're gonna shoot up again. Third shoe, Yeezy Foam. Some people might say this is a sneaker. Some people might say it's not. Um, this is probably one of the most comfortable things I've ever put on my foot. I doubled up and it's a great shoe. I hope to see a lot more colorways in 21. This is probably the best Jordan that came out all year, in my opinion. Reason why I think this is probably the best Jordan that came out all year is because it's just, the focus is on the silhouette. The focus is on the silhouette. It's an off-white. It's probably one of the best ones he's ever made. I think this this will go down as probably one of the greatest shoes Virgil's ever touched. The colorway is amazing. It's an easy wear. It was kind of hard to get, and I got these super, super early. This is, to me, the best Jordan that released all year. But I think the most meaningful, most impactful, most slept on shoe was this right here. The fact that Kobe had a time in Kobe history where he was a free agent and he was legit just wearing everything. And this right here is beautiful, man. Um, the packaging from the Shoe Palace pairs was amazing. This Reebok, you killed it. Um, I had to put a Reebok in there, especially with there's talks about them being sold. I wanted to show a little bit of variety within the brands, but everything that happened this year, the Lakers winning the championship, Kobe passing away, and us just looking back and reflecting. I think this was an amazing way to end the year. So with all that being said, we're here at this particular moment, and I wanna give you the heads up that my next YouTube video is gonna be my entire sneaker collection. And I've made it no secret throughout this year of 2020 that the only way that you could keep buying or that you should continue to buy, whether it's shoes, watches, clothes, anything that you enjoy or consumed or costs a lot of money and has resale value to it, you have to get to the point where Buying it then pays for the next one. And what I mean by that is at some point you have to let go to be able to pay for the next one with the current one. As you see, I'm in my sneaker room. And if you take a look around, there happens to be a, a decent amount of shoes in here. So the next video is gonna show you my entire sneaker collection. And in this video, I'm going to show you the shoes that I've decided that I'm gonna sell on Shop2J's Closet. So this next video is gonna give you the heads up and show you all the ones that are on sale before they're on sale. And after you're done watching that video, all of these shoes will be available on Shop2J's Closet. And I happen to be an eight and a half, nine, so get ready. If you've made it this far into the video, I figured I'd throw you a bone, especially if you're a reseller. 
top five selling shoes at Urban Necessities for the year of 2020. And these are gonna surprise you. These are shoes that we've literally sold thousands of. You're always asking me, Jay, what shoes should I buy? What shoes should I sell? Top five, here we go. Number one, your shields. Yeezy 2, your shields, non-reflective. Number one selling shoe at Urban Necessities for the year of 2020. Number two, Yeezy Black non-reflective. I mean, come on, these are like the Air Force One of Adidas at this point. Um, number three, Yeezy Zebra. And I joked all year long and I kept saying, I hope they do another 100 restocks of these because these sell day in and day out. Number four, Bread 11, 2019. How do you not have a pair of Bread 11s in your sneaker collection? And if you don't have them, apparently you're coming to Urban Necessities and getting them. And last but not least, Thought Boy 12s. Jordan University, Jordan 12, University Gold, Thought Boy 12s, black and yellow, black and yellow. That was the second most selling Jordan at Urban Necessities for the year of 2020. And if you're a reseller, you should probably go buy some and then go to unconsignment.com. Can sign them and send them because I'm pretty sure these are gonna have a real shot at being up there again next year. So guys, as always, I appreciate you watching and uh, commenting, liking, sharing. Um, if you haven't, please do all of that for me so your boy could get a couple more views so we can keep doing all the cool stuff that we do and sharing it with the world. Like I said, you're going to want to tune into the next video. The next video is going to be my entire sneaker collection and I'm going to let you in on why I'm going to sell probably a million dollars worth of sneakers. I'll see you guys soon. Happy New Year!